Hey all, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having us. It's a great honor for us to be here, we're delighted. Amazing lectures today. Uh, so before we start, my name is uh, Milovan. My name is Alexander. And as you can see on the main slide, what we're gonna talk about today are research sprints and what are our experiences with them. Uh, but before we skip to the topic, a little bit about ourselves. So we are coming from Nordius. Uh, the company has been founded back in 2010. Uh, our headquarters are in Belgrade, and uh, we are a crew of 166 people from 20 different nationalities. Uh, our flagship product is Top 11, be a football manager. And the game, it's a football management game on uh, mobile, and it has been played by more than 170 million people all across the globe. We even had one player from North Korea and one from Vatican as well. Unfortunately, they both churned some time ago. But yeah, the game is still going strong. So today we're going to talk about um, uh, who we are uh, and what is our mission in our, in our company. Uh, we're going to talk about, sorry, we're going to talk about uh, things uh, we did before, how we did it, uh, some problems we faced over there. Uh, how we try to solve them using sprints, and um, we'll show you some real life example as well, so you can see it for yourself. And afterwards, we hopefully will give you uh, enough insights so you can go back to your companies thinking about possible implementation of uh, sprints in your process. But before we skip to those things, about uh, a little bit more information who we actually uh, are. So, top 11 user research team. Uh, we exist since 2015, and it's actually a crew of uh, three people. So as you can see, it's myself, it's Alexander, and a third colleague, uh, Mladen, he's in the audience. And once we started, we were actually a part of the marketing team, and we were there for two, for two years. Uh, some transitions happened, and from this year, we are actually embedded into the so-called squad. The squad is actually the product team. And here on the picture, you can see how we actually sit in our office. So it's three of us, user researchers, uh, two guys uh, above our product managers for Top 11, and two data scientists for Top 11. We consider ourselves and call ourselves as guardians of amazing user experiences of Nordius games. So um, now how we did things before. So usually it's uh, goes up like uh, PMs or designers are coming with a great idea, uh, maybe some good dream or something, uh, or uh, backup is usually in user research data, previous user research data or analytics, uh, and they, uh, then they go straight to the coding. They uh, are going to developers, uh, starting to talk about uh, the final product. Uh, developers do their thing and they are delivering us the final product, so whether that's a new feature or new product. Then we do our things, uh, testing, 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 blah, blah, blah. Then we come up to results. And this is usual reaction of stakeholders. So as you may see, uh, some of the previous uh, guys we talked today, uh, these are the questions, are we sure about that? And how are we sure about that? How much are we sure about uh, what we are, you're saying? Uh, is that the right person, like Jean-Luc said? So uh, we experience this a, a, a lot of time. and. Uh, when it happens so much time, we start thinking, okay, maybe we are doing something wrong. So maybe we can improve something. Maybe we should think about something else. Uh, and Milan will now give you a few examples of some problems we faced uh, using this approach. Okay. Uh, so I will give you actually three examples, the situations that occurred to us while we were uh, acting uh, based on this uh, process. So one of the first situations happened last year. Uh, we were testing uh, in top 11 the so-called auctions feature. Auctions is the aspect of the game where you can actually buy and sell players. Uh, we tested the feature and the feedback was great. We released the feature and we saw a huge amount of hate around the feature. Uh, we weren't really sure what happened, so we checked the forum, the Facebook, hate all over the place and what actually happened players were hating the aspect of the feature that we didn't even test and that we didn't even know that's going to be implemented. And we were like, okay. So that was one of the problems. Uh, the second problem that happened uh, to us 
uh, occurred when we were developing and testing the associations feature. It's some sort of a clamp feature in top 11 where you join uh, friends and play against other clans or associations. Uh, once, uh, what happened there, uh, we tested the feature, the coded feature. It's been, it's, uh, so we had six developers working on it. They coded it, we tested it, and it went, it went really, really bad. So we decided to kill it. So essentially six developers spent uh, three weeks uh, working on something that was finally killed in the end. Finally, one more example, uh, the so-called assistant feature in top 11. It essentially consists of things that you can do and you should do on a daily basis in top 11. We had a problem there. The developer, the game designer was developing it, but we realized that he, that he developed it, all the list that you can do, uh, but without uh, proper user understanding. He wasn't completely sure what he should include and what he should exclude <coughs> there. So those are like the, the three situations that occurred to us and we just knew that we might do better than that. Yeah, and this, uh, these problems, uh, they all have its own specifics, but there is one thing which is common to all of them and that is this, basically. <laughs> Uh, lack of proper communication between design team and user research team. Uh, and in general, between design and product management, uh, product management and user, uh, user research team. So we decided to uh, sit down all together and uh, think about the uh, problem and the scope of the problem we have and uh, decided to fix it because otherwise uh, no purpose uh, of, of user research team. So uh, we started to think about new approaches, uh, how are we going to fix that, we start talking. That was, that was the first step. And then we come up with some uh, new solutions. And uh, yeah, uh, Milan will give you more about sprints and some theoretical background, how that fits uh, our needs. OK, yeah. So it was in the beginning of this year when uh, we as researchers stumbled up on the really cool book called uh, Sprints, how to solve big problems and test new ideas in just five days. It sounds pretty cool. And it sounded uh, pretty cool uh, to us. Uh, so make sure to check out uh, the book. Uh, what is the essence of this approach? So this is like the typical product life cycle, like the, the background uh, of it. So you have an idea, you build something up on it, uh, you launch the idea, the product, the feature, and finally you learn something from it. Uh, however, uh, the sprints are kind of some sort of a hack to this process and the uh, essence of sprints is simply to iterate on the idea itself. Uh, so you have an idea of something and you are making sure to collect the user feedback as early as possible and that's why, what we actually did when we tested our feature. We had constantly, while changing the idea, had players giving us constant feedback on the idea itself. So we read the book, we consulted with some other guys who were also dealing with sprints and uh, this year we actually applied them inside the firm and actually on top 11. So how does it look like in our company? Uh, we decided to uh, put it uh, in a time frame of uh, one week because that's the point of the sprint and uh, when we are saying one week we are meaning uh, five days Number one reason for that is we like weekends so much. Uh, so uh, we need to fit it in, 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 in five days. And these are the phases in, in the, those five days. So first two days are uh, committed to design. Uh, design team is thinking about solutions, uh, ideas, how to fix something, uh, how to uh, create something. Uh, another two days, uh, developers are developing prototyping, basically developing product, picture or whatever. And the final day is uh, testing, so that's our prime time. Sorry. Uh, on our side, which is probably more interesting uh, to you, um, we are starting from Wednesday. <laughs> uh, we are starting with the test design, uh, delivering, uh, creating everything uh, we need uh, to to know uh, before we start uh, the test. Uh, on parallel, we are doing recruitment, uh, recruiting with uh, uh, with our um, outsourcing agency. Uh, to be ready for Friday when we are doing testing. As, uh, now Friday is a really important day in this, uh, in this process because uh, we are doing testing and it's not uh, so much different than the things you are probably doing to, 
in your company, but there is one thing which is maybe different, and that's uh, note taking and uh, live communication with uh, designers uh, all the time. So basically, uh, we are uh, taking notes during the interviews, and we are uh, putting uh, putting it uh, immediately to the designer's room, so they can see it immediately uh, when we are putting it over there. So at the end of the day, they have an idea about uh, what are the key insights uh, from that day, from that testing. So basically, at the end of the Friday, uh, we are sitting down and do the little thing we call synthesis. So we are all talk about uh, the things we find out that day. Um, basically, we are done over here with the designers. They know they are briefed enough so they can continue working on Monday and Tuesday. But we are continuing also working on a more detailed analysis and we present results on Tuesday uh, to a larger audience. So basically, so uh, the entire team is um, aligned with uh, what we have to, to tell them. And then um, we are repeating the, the entire process. So when we are doing this, uh, we, we started with uh, iterating it uh, a lot of time, uh, and we, we learned a lot in, in process. It, it, it doesn't work from the first time, so just so you know if you want to try it. That what is the most important things are to define the, the starting hypothesis uh, uh, for the, the starting hypothesis and for the next hypothesis you need to also, uh, for the next testing you need to also define hypothesis and uh, be sure and align about that with the design team. Also, um, if you're making changes uh, to your design from week to week, you have to be quite sure that you uh, have all the lists, so all, all the changes on the list so you are sure about what are you testing in that week. Um, this is kind of silly, but it's really important to have stickies with uh, keynotes uh, in, in, in some, on some wall or whiteboard so everybody can see it. And the most important thing is to include stakeholders, designers or product managers into data analysis. So this is really, really important to, to know and without this, the entire process is useless. Cool. Now we're skipping to the, to the feature that we tested in this way, but before that, for those of you who didn't play the game, uh, a bit about top 11, so this is actually the main screen uh, showing your next opponent in the game, and what you can do actually in top 11 is to build your own team, you are preparing your team for the next upcoming match, you are playing the match, and so on. Yeah. So now we're going to present you uh, the part of the, of the game which uh, we, we tested this uh, approach uh, and the part of the game um, uh, which we implemented already in the, uh, in the game. So new feature is uh, in top 11 from like a month ago uh, and that's formations. Formation is basically part of, um, of the preparation phase of the top 11 because in top 11 you have preparation phase, phase and execution phase. This is a key component of preparation phase. Uh, where managers can basically uh, choose their st uh, strategies uh, to play against uh, other players in, in top 11. So we started from, uh, from here, uh, very uh, raw, uh, low polished, uh, low polished actually, uh, design where we uh, wanted to just test uh, concept. Does this work for our um, target audience or not? So we started with uh, functional core mechanics so the player can do things they wanted to do. And what was the core? Um, as you may see, this is formation. If you watch football at any point in your life, you know what it is. Um, so basically, this, is, uh, this gives uh, managers opportunity to make formation on their own. And uh, the difference between the previous design and this design uh, was because uh, they were like really limited uh, back there. And in this concept, we're giving them uh, opportunity to express themselves uh, as managers. So this is the starting point, and what we got on the first week is that concept is good. So our target audience uh, is uh, looking forward to this design, and it's really appealing to them. So we validated concept uh, and uh, checked some usability improvements, which we uh, actually uh, implemented in, in uh, next week for next iteration. Uh, but what we uh, stumbled upon is feedback. Feedback was really, really bad at the first uh, stage, so we wanted to make sure that uh, we, we are having from each iteration we're having better feedback. So this is another version where feedback was really bad. 
and we uh, started to uh, look for another um, another directions where we can check the feedback and we implemented uh, numbers and visual uh, feedback for uh, just for any case sorry I love this <laughs> I can do job my oh. <laughs> thank you <laughs> So now we have, oh yeah, uh, now, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so now we have um, numbers and uh, uh, visual feedback as well. So uh, this was really overwhelming for most of the users. So we uh, tried to find uh, uh, another, another, another uh, direction where we can actually test and see uh, the feedback from, from users. In next week, uh, we got uh, validated the direction for, for the feedback. So we can go on. Uh, now we have usability checked in previous stages. So we can go on with the final, uh, final stage of the of the product, which is, which looks like this. So you can see this is uh, the final after four uh, to five weeks of uh, iteration we got from, as you may see, from the first one to the last one, uh, very fast and uh, with all the stakeholders <laughs> included uh, into the design. So. Basically, uh, this was a real-life example of how we uh, try, to, uh, try to be fast, try to be uh, more collaborative with uh, our designers, uh, try to do uh, a synergy with the design team so we can work all together, uh, not waste the time, be aligned every, at every stage of the project so we can make uh, a better experience for our, for our players. So it's been a couple of months uh, since we implemented this and what, he, what we have achieved uh, with this. First of all, uh, the designers themselves are now more confident in the design process itself. As I mentioned uh, regarding the assistant feature, there could be a lot of doubts. Okay, so should I include this? Should I exclude that? And so on. Now, by getting constant iterative weekly player feedback, they are my, much, much more confident that they are actually doing the right thing. Second thing, almost the most important one, is that doubts around research findings are eliminated. So you saw the suspicious face in our previous, uh, one, of, one of the previous slides. We are not confronting that anymore. It's now much more relaxed. We feel great. But one of the biggest uh, wins for the, research, for the research team was actually that we are now included in the design process right from the start. And it's a hu huge win. And finally, uh, the development process itself is now more uh, efficient in, ter in terms of uh, saving developers time and energy. Now they are not uh, wasting their time on coding on something that's, that's, that simply at some point might, might be killed. That would be actually that. Thank you. Uh, yep. We have a question straight away, so hopefully this mic is on. Thanks for the talk. Uh, question about the concept validation process, like when you don't have anything to play yet, how do you, what's the, what does it look like? Uh, what's the most important in, in, in that phase is to have functional core mechanics. So the idea you're trying to implement in your game, it must, must be visible in that prototype, whatever it is. It, may, it could be paper prototype, but if you're communicating idea correctly with, with the core mechanic, you can do it. You can do it easily. Uh, at that stage, um, you can only check how appealing uh, your concept is. You cannot go uh, far beyond that. But afterwards, with the uh, next iteration, you can actually go far and far uh, with in more details about uh, the concept itself. Do you bring in people to the office to play, or how does it go? Yes, uh, we brought people in our venues so they could play it. Uh, and we uh, were trying to uh, have as much as people as we can uh, in our venues in a more and more iterative process so we can be more and more sure in what we are saying. Yep. Thanks. Hello. Thanks for the very interesting talk. Uh, I would like to know what kind of uh, consistency was your, your typical sprint team 
because I know they ask for a very varied skill set to be included. So what has been your kind of best practices on that? To be honest, I didn't catch that. I, I didn't. Uh, so sorry. So what has been the uh, consistency of your sprint team? What kind of skills do you have uh, what there? What kind of skills uh, members of the team has for a sprint? Yeah. Right. So uh, must have for a sprint team, for in our case, was a product manager, uh, one designer, at least one designer, lead designer for the for the feature we are uh, testing, and entire basically entire uh, user research team. <coughs> so we can cover everything. We can so we can cover interviews, organizing, uh, study design, and everything. So uh, three researchers, one designer and product manager. Hello. Um, so I, I read the sprint book a while ago, and one of the challenges they speak about in the book is just convincing uh, designers or developers to, to take part in the sprint, because they're getting away from their usual job, and they might not be completely convinced about the research process. Is that something that you encountered in this industry? Yeah. Um, it wasn't really easy to do that. Uh, every time you, you're trying to do something like this, when you're trying to involve them in, in your process, it's like, do I have to be there? Um, am I really necessary over there? I have a lot of other things to do, you know? <laughs> and the thing is, yeah, you have to really insist on that. Uh, and once they see the value in it, they're coming by, by themselves. They don't need to push them, they do, you don't need to, uh, call them or anything. They are asking when when is the next uh, when is the next testing. So uh, we're we're gonna improve this. Uh, are we gonna take a bigger board or something? That's the the stage where, where you want to get. And also, just one more thing, uh, as some sort of a hack for that kind of a problem, you should make sure that you have a dedicated room where you can actually put the sticky notes. And from our experience, they are really willing to come an hour by hour to check what actually happened. So that's a really, from our side, really, we had a really great experience with that, to, to provide them the useful information in that way that is interesting to them and that, that they want to come to see. Yeah, but one of the things that you should be probably aware of, I don't know whether we mentioned that, uh, you have to communicate that uh, they cannot conclude anything before the testing is done. So we encountered that as well, because after two respondents, Oh, yeah, we know. That's it. We know. No, 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 you don't. You don't really know. Let's wait uh, to finish uh, the testing so then you can conclude something together. Yes. Hi, thank you for the presentation. So I think we live in, in the era of the iteration. So now you talk about Sprint, but then people talk about Agile. Then in IBM we talk about the loop. People talk about circular design and blah, blah, blah. Don't you feel that dividing in micro sprints like in deep into granularity you are going to lose the complexity of things so how do you feel the user research like questions about enjoyability user acceptance these kind of things that are not strictly related to a feature but about the whole experience of the play yeah that's always a good question thank you <laughs> <laughs> um, we encountered that as well, um, and uh, the good thing about Sprint is it's not uh, the only methods you use. Uh, you, <laughs> not about Sprint, but probably about us. Um, we are uh, using Sprints at a very early stage. Once we are uh, sure about a few things about it, we are doing different kind of methods so we can be sure that the entire Sprint process was good enough. So when we are at the stage when the product can be uh, tested in a, uh, more full experience uh, uh, at the full full experience level. For example, formation combined with the rest of the game, as we are doing another feature now, and we are combining it with the uh, preparation phase. So we are making, we are trying to, to make at some point uh, to mix it with other methods, so we can check the sprint itself and to check uh, our insights before. So uh, we are usually doing it with uh, large scale play, play testing when you when we check and compare the results from the first stages of the sprint uh, and, and at the end of the uh, product development. I hope that's the answer. Hi, uh, you mentioned that you um, brought in as many external people as you could for the, for the testing 
days of the sprints. Uh, can I ask roughly how many you brought in on each testing day? Per one testing. How many people per one testing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many right. subjects? Uh, we had, uh, for each iteration, we had uh, between six and ten uh, respondents. Um, it's not nearly enough, but uh, we are doing every week, if you have consistent sample from uh, six to ten people, then you can conclude something which is valuable. J just quickly on that matter as well, is it? did you find it difficult to, because um, that means you need, uh, over the four weeks, you need like up to 40 people total. Was that a challenge to recruit enough Surprisingly people? Surprisingly not, uh, because we have a big uh, user base and we, are also, we also have a, a huge uh, database uh, in Belgrade uh, for the people really eager to come to our offices. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We really don't have, thank God. <laughs> um, I understand that this is just a beginning for you, but do you have any idea on, or do, have you had any ideas on how to scale this? For example, now you're, you've applied it to one project, one game. What if you have multiple games parallel running at the same time? That happened. That happened uh, as well. We had like two uh, research sprints for two different features at the same time. It was tough, man. <laughs> <laughs> same team? Same team, same people. Um, it was really tough. I mean, uh, when you should combine, you saw that like uh, uh, every day has its own stage and its own purpose. And then you combine that like today is Wednesday, study design. Oh, but it's a testing day. Oh, nice. So we, we are, it, it's really completely crazy experience, but we managed it somehow and decided not to do it ever again. <laughs> Hello chaps, I've got a question if I may. Uh, oh, I'll come to you next. Uh, one of the principles in the, in the sprint book, one of the tools, is the power to give uh, someone a kind of more powerful vote. I think it's called a super voter or something like that. Uh, did you try that? How did you choose that person? And were there any issues with your choice in that person? We like democracy. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't, you, you chose not to have a super no, voter? No. It didn't uh, work well for us because uh, the extremes uh, were like sometimes really different and we didn't want to do, go that way. So we decided not to. And it's really, yeah, kind of worked. Uh, it's maybe a part of, uh, at least I like to think about it that way, a part of a Nordic culture really kind of have a flat management. We're all kind of equal. We always, as you saw on one of the slides, we were thinking differently, but, but once we all realized that we all as a group can do better, we just sit, discuss everything, agree on our everything and so on. That's why we essentially agree up that we have a couple of key people in the, we are always in the room together. We're always calling the stakeholders, I mean the PMs and designers to check everything they ask really good questions, what does it actually mean, and so on, so we kind of push the entire process in a in democratic way. Thank you, guys. Uh, really good lecture. Milovan, very nice, Thank you. nice styling, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> what about me? So, one question from... Uh, sorry? So one question for me is, uh, are you hiring? Maybe I will be happy to send over my CV to you guys. <laughs> Not in the moment, actually. No. Not in the moment. <laughs> but we'll have you in mind. <laughs> Don't even send CV. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's screening. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course, we're hiring. <laughs> Any more questions for these gents? I have a question. Oh, go. Can I drop mic? Can you not? No. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks very much.